Okay, this is a video to show you what I've been doing in my attic for the last month or so. Um, in a previous video, I had showed how I had added uh, these fiberglass insulation bats to the rafter bays in order to prevent icicles from forming on the roof edge. And the main reason was the icicles over the front door caused an ice buildup or over the back door. Those were the critical spots, but I went ahead and added these bats to all of the rafter bays because I wanted the icicles to not form at any location along the roof edge, primarily because where there are icicles, there's also the possibility of the ice dam. So now the thing I did not do at that time when I added these was I did not seal, air seal, um, the soffit vent. So even though I had uh, fiberglass bats over the rafter bays, the attic was still fully vented. The paper, craft paper of the bat would come down to the attic floor, but it was not sealed in any way at that point. Uh, in my house, when I bought it, it had a plywood deck in the attic and there's insulation under it. It's not very well air sealed, probably, because it was built in 1984, but I didn't want to have to try to take the deck up and then try to air seal the attic because of all the work that that would entail. Because also, my attic now is full with all sorts of junk. Okay, that would be a major project. This project is not as major as that. After I moved in, I did add a plywood sheet to this remaining section under the very narrow part of the of 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 the attic. I just did that because I didn't like having the fiberglass bats just sitting there collecting dust or whatever, and I wanted to be able to put stuff more junk, even all the way out to the edge. Okay, but like I said before, the e the soffit vents still completely vented the attic. So even after I added insulation to the rafter base, I didn't really make the attic any warmer. And as a result, it didn't really affect my heating bill. Um, I didn't notice any difference, even though I looked at it rather carefully. And I would say that since the attic was still fully vented, maybe that's not at all surprising. Now, the icicle formation went down dramatically, and that was the primary reason I did it. Now, this winter, I said, well, why don't I take another step and seal the attic so the attic is not vented, but that the roof assembly is vented, okay? This is the R19, and it's in, uh, the, uh, designed for this probably a 2 by 8 rafter. I, I forget exactly what it is, but this insulation is designed so that there will be about a 1-inch channel between the insulation and the roof uh, plywood, the sheathing, the roof deck for ventilation. And it's got the soffit vent uh, and the ridge vent. Okay, so here's what I did. I took, uh, I took a one by four strapping. I just pushed it down in this corner against the attic floor and the rafters. And then I screwed it into the rafters somewhat at an uncomfortable position, but I was able to get it in. Once I did that, I used insulation tape. This is from Sika, and it seems to be sticky. It's only been on there now for several weeks. It seems fine, but in a year's time, I'll come back up and look at it again. The idea, and I caulked it at this junction, the idea is to make an extremely miniature wall down here um, where it would be sealed. So the attic now is more like a finished attic, although it doesn't have any drywall. This uh, fiberglass batch do require a protective coating. They could easily get ripped, and uh, it probably the fire code calls for a protective coating. Okay, that may be for another year. Um, I did, for doing this, to try to make this secure, I did add some extra screws to this extra plywood sheet. It was a little bit difficult. I did have this right angle tool that I was able to use. 
the babies and out near the edge. Um, you really want this down as solid as you can because you're gonna, if you're gonna be caulking something, you don't want it moving. Okay, with that strapping screwed into the rafters, maybe there wouldn't have been movement down there. I'm not sure. Okay, another thing that I added was I added this plywood triangle sheet into the corner because a very difficult place to air seal is that corner. Because the reason is the, joy, the um, studs on the end wall are really disappearing as you get into the corner and there's almost nothing to tie anything to. So here I've screwed this little plywood wall into the last two studs. There is no last stud as you get down to the corner and in that corner the strapping and this plywood they meet and it's fairly rigid because of the way they're butted up against each other and then screwed in place and then I caulk. I've used the um, this insulation tape at all of these joints between that I would end up getting between insulation. This is the stuff I found. I got it on Amazon. Originally I started off using the Tyvek tape for, um, you know, for um, Tyvek weather or whatever you call that stuff on the outside of the sheathing of the house. This stuff I felt to be slightly stickier. It's a little bit cheaper. So I started using this instead of the Tyvek. This I just kind of used up what I had. Okay, um, so that's the basic idea. Uh, I did add insulation to the end walls. Of course, this is not needed for added, for getting rid of icicles or icicle formation. The reason I did this was when I opted to move to an unvented attic. So I wanted the attic to be insulated from the cold. And um, so this it was just part of that overall procedure. Now the attic should be warmer. I might see a difference in my my heating bill, okay? Um, this is still not going to be a completely sealed attic because you can see, I, I haven't seen these edges where these meet, where the bats meet on the rafters are stapled. So they're not obviously airtight. I added the, the seam tape in places where the insulation bats had a joint. There's a little thing that I developed, you know, so that when you're trying to tape to two things that are not held rigidly together, you want to be able to kind of pull back on one of them so, to, to get a good bond. Okay, I used that quite a bit. There are a few other special spots that I needed to do things a little bit different, like there's a spot where, you know, the vent, the plumbing vent, goes out through the eaves. That's a spot where air would easily get through. I had to add some backing rod and liberally use, liberal use of caulk and or the seam tape in that area. Next year I'll come up and see how that's doing. So I did end up going through three rolls of tape at $15 a crack. That's $45. I spent about $25 on the strapping. Uh, as to how long it would take to make this money back in my um, heating belt, I'm not sure. I'll have to wait until next year's heating bill. I'll take a look at that. It's not the easiest thing in the world to air seal in this case. It would be easier. Here's another example of a spot which is going to cause a little bit of trouble. Where the collar ties come through. It's a very odd angle. So you end up using more of the tape. And um, with some practice, you can have a slightly neater job, but very often this gap can be considerable between the framing members, and that's where you can get a big air leak. A spot here where the end walls, uh, where the insulation comes to a joint, that seal tape seemed to do a pretty good job. There were a spot here on the end wall where the, the distance between two of the studs was greater than 16 inches, so I had to cut the bats in the other direction, the long direction, and I used that tape to, to seal it. I basically tried to seal all of the spots, with the exception of the places where it's stapled, since that would there's a really large number of those, and I'm not sure 
if I'd really need to do that because the airflow through those might be small enough. I don't know. I'm just going to wait until a year goes by. Check the heating bill. See if um, how this is done on the heating. Um, I think that's how that does everything that I intended to show you on this project. Oh, uh, I will say there's probably one other thing I could show you, and that is up on the ridge. If you look up at the ridge, there were some areas where the fiberglass bats, when I first rolled them up, they went right up to the ridge and I stapled them on the ridge beam. But there were other places where I didn't do that. And that was because when I originally embarked on this project, pull this one. Um, I didn't know if I was going to seal the attic totally. I thought maybe it was I would only vent I'd just try to keep the icicles from forming. So there were several spots for example when I first added the bat. Okay let's see yeah where I did not bring the bat all the way up and staple it into the uh, ridge. So I ended up having to use a lot of the sealing tape to make up for those gaps. I had to actually cut some small pieces of bat, new bat, just to fill in that little gap. I was originally afraid of not venting the attic, but now I more or less have given up on that idea. I'm going to have the attic unvented as if it were a finished attic. If I do need ventilation in this attic at some point in the future, I'll probably add a vent to the end wall, okay, and use that to vent the attic itself if I wanted to. Right now, the, the ridge vent and the soffit vent are only being used to ventilate the, the roof deck, okay, which is the primary ventilation requirement because the roof boards are where you'll primarily get a problem with condensation coming through, okay. Anyway, that's just a little update on this project. Thanks.